Nick Casario, you beautiful bastard. You did it again. You, you screwed up my plans. I was supposed to be starting to grill early dinner, and uh, all of a sudden I find out that the Texans have restructured Stefan Diggs' deals. And I, I, and I think that a lot of you, when you first hear the details of this, you're going to think like, ah, ah, oh, the Texans got fleeced. We can't, they, ah. I feel the opposite. Um, my fear was that they would have redone Stefan Diggs' deal and committed large money to him to an aging wide receiver who's had a history of some volatility at times. This is uh, this is the sum total of what they did. Uh, Adam Schefter and sources credited with this, but I'll read from Adam Schefter's report. As part of their blockbuster trade to acquire wide receiver Stefan Diggs, the Houston Texans wiped out the final three years on his contract, giving him the ability to become a free agent after this season. So remember, his deal went through 2027. They had a bunch of guarantees this year on his $19 million in salary. They had about $3 million in guarantees uh, over the next several years. Not that big a deal. You figure, okay, if there's any trouble, they can just go ahead and cut him. But, um, you know, he they would have his contractual rights. One part about this that's kind of juicy and good for Stefan Diggs, maybe juiced up his excitement to come here. They took the $3.5 million guaranteed to Diggs next season, moved it into this season, giving him a raise and assuring him of the $22.52 million in guaranteed money in 2024. Basically, as I read it, they're giving him a $22.5 million contract for a one-year deal. He can become a free agent after this. A lot of details to dig into here, and I'm going to try to keep this video to 10 minutes. I'll try to take some of your questions. But I think the the biggest thing for me, my gut takeaway from this is somebody that I had no need or desire to have Stefan Diggs sign a long-term contract at his age and with his history. It's that this, this is an acknowledgement of what we all already knew, which is that if Stefan Diggs had a bunch of guaranteed money this year, and if he balled out in the modern NFL, he could agitate like hell and get the Texans to capitulate or set him free or do something at the end of this year. And you might not like it. I don't like that that's the way the league is going, but that's the way things are. That's the way business is, condu is conducted right now. And I think that Nico and – sorry, D'Amico. There's so many Ecos on this team. I think that D'Amico and Nick probably just understand that and accept that. Uh, to read a little bit more, the Texans, uh, Schefter goes through the, the details of the trade. You guys all know it by heart by now. Um, with the contract adjustment, the Texans now anticipate getting the best version of Stefan Diggs, who will be in position to negotiate another long-term contract next offseason. This, this is the big thing. I think like a motivated, incentivized Stefan Diggs over the course of one year Giving up when all is some when all is totaled up with all the draft picks calculated into it, what's going to end up being the equivalent of either a late second round pick or an early third round pick? Um, I, that's a that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make because if things if things work out well, you're going to have to come to some sort of a reckoning anyway with Stefan Diggs. It, like practically, that's just the way the league is now. So now you get a super motivated Stefan Diggs who, as he was in Buffalo for the first two years. Signed in 2020, or traded in 2020, he and Josh Allen were just simpatico. Stefan Diggs was the best teammate ever. It was 2022, after third year with the team when things started to get a little bit sloppy, the blow up on the sideline at the, the Bengals playoffs game, all that stuff. Um, so that's that's the sum total of it. The one, the sum total of the, the renegotiated trade the one perhaps carrot on the stick for the Texans that if this is that if Stefan Diggs left next year as a free agent after having a good year this year, presumably, um, they could get compensatory pick because of his age. I believe it would be capped at a fifth round pick, so it's not like you're it's not like you're going to take that compensatory pick and go out and get a slam dunk blue chipper. It'd be nice, and we know that they, uh, that that Nick can do things with draft picks, but I'm I am okay with this. Um, I think one other part of it that's interesting is people have asked, a lot of our listeners this morning asked, what does all of this mean for Nico Collins? You know, Nico is going to want a new deal or, you know, becomes a free agent at the end of this year. 
and maybe they offer him a new contract before this season. But what's it mean for Nico if perhaps his production isn't as high now that Stefan Diggs is on the roster? We went over this this morning. There have been five times in NFL history where three receivers have had 1,000 yards on the same team. It's very, very rare. So unlikely that like all these guys, Tank Dell, Nico Collins, and Stefan Diggs are going to have career years yardage-wise. Uh, touchdowns, plenty of room for touchdowns all over the place. But I don't think it's going to be a concern. And, and I think at least partly there's this. This gives Nico Collins leverage. You know, with Stefan Diggs, a free agent at the end of the year, it's, 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 it incentivizes the Texans to take care of Nico Collins as long as he plays the way he does. And I don't worry about disgruntlement in the case of Nico Collins whatsoever. I don't worry about disgruntlement with Tank Dell. Stefan Diggs has had a history of disgruntlement, both in Minnesota and here. Uh, a few of you asked, and I thought it was a great question, whether maybe the Texans consulted Case Keenum before they signed, uh, before they signed Stefan Diggs, because Case had the whole Minneapolis miracle thing in, in Minnesota. He was with him as, when Case was a backup up in Buffalo. And um, it, it apparently, based on Case Keenum's reaction on social media and what have you, I'm guessing he vouched for him in his time there. But I think this, this sets it up to have really what looks like a team that's genuinely all in. Not Jerry Jones all in. Not Skip Bayless, my ass, all in. If you don't understand that reference, just don't worry about it. it doesn't, it's not a big deal. Um, but this is all in. I mean, this is a one-year deal for Stefan Diggs. You gave up a, a relatively high draft pick, the equivalent of a relatively high draft pick to get him. And this is this is all in. This is what all in looks like, man. This is what it, it, this is all in. All in. And I'm cool with it. I'm super cool with it. I know at least a few of you are going to have objections, so uh, I'll get to you in a second. The one... One question that I saw was, okay, what's the likelihood that Diggs returns if he does have an awesome year here? That's an interesting question. It's a very interesting question. I don't know Stefan Diggs personally. I don't know how this year is going to go and what his expectations would be. I think like they're just in, uh, they're in carpe, de carpe diem YOLO mode right now. And, but it's, it's carpe diem YOLO mode, but not in the way that Bill O'Brien just kind of mortgaged the future and spent boatloads more all over the place than he should have. This is a reasonable one-year deal for a receiver who's still very, very effective and is probably going to be even better this year with all these complimentary pieces in place. So I'm, I'm cool with that part of it. I was going to do a video today talking about some of the issues that Diggs had with the Bills and why exactly those two sides just uh, couldn't get along anymore. They had irreconcilable differences. Irreconcilable differences? I'm a child of the 80s. I saw that Drew Barrymore movie at least like seven times. And I don't I still don't know how to pronounce the word. All right. Uh, I'm on time today. Yes. So if Diggs leaves in free agency, what kind of draft picks could we get? Uh, as I understand it, it would be a fifth round pick, most likely a compensatory pick of a fifth round pick. I am a compensatory pick dullard. Don't give me like the, you asked me to tell you the formula for compensatory picks or anything like that. I usually, just like I do with drafts, compensation calculation i defer to the experts like texans cap great follow on x.com um howdy seth scott the high oh scott the high rise window cleaner thanks man thanks for being on here that's he's literally that's not like a nickname or anything that's literally what he does scott does that's good brody uh they could be oh 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 yes 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 excellent thank you in the life of colby damn it i had that as a bullet point too Yes, this very much opens up the possibility that they draft a receiver in the second round. So we talked about that this morning. Did they draft a receiver now that they've got three competent wide receivers and they had Stefan Diggs presumably locked down through 2027. Well, we just found out that daddy might leave. So yeah, get a new one. Get a young kid in the doors. I say, by all means, this morning my fantasy was this, that since the defensive tackles that were going to be available in the second round seem to all either be undersized athletes who might be good pass rushers or Tavondre Sweat. I said, well, why don't you just draft both of them? A Tavondre Sweat and a and a Chris Jenkins. I don't care. Just do that. Now I might be easing off on that a little bit. Um so let's see a third maybe uh I feared that there was a handshake agreement to give him like a three to four year extension. Yeah. Yeah Brady I agree with you. I think yes. Yeah like 
I think I think a lot of people's knee jerk reaction, which isn't it's not a bad knee jerk reaction. Um, and like it's there's valid reasons to think that like the Texans shouldn't have done that. I just happened to fall on the side of being totally cool with this. I did not want them to extend this contract any more than it already was. Um, I didn't I didn't need this to blossom into potential headaches. And this is like one of the things you do when you still when you have your rookie quarterback on his rookie contract or your second year quarterback on his rookie contract, you can take short term risks. So this is a this is a short term risk, but you're not handicapping yourself in the future. Let's see, definitely drafting a receiver in the early rounds. Uh, Javon Baker seems to be someone they readily like. I do need to go. I've, I've been bad on my, uh, you know, I, Baker was one of the eight guys. Thanks to the Texans 22 guys, uh, the YouTube channel, Texans 22 and the podcast. Uh, go check that out. I did uh, an interview with them the other night and started talking about draft stuff a little bit. I owe you guys about 18 different draft videos. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Another brilliant move. My Nick pays the, I don't know if that's sarcastic yet. Let's find out and see what Riverbend is going to say. Pays the 3.5 million in 2024, manages expectations of the player, his teammates, and fans. Another consideration we might have new offensive. Ah, uh, that's a really good point, Riverbend. I'm gonna use that. I'll credit you tomorrow. But with Diggs, too. I mean, that Diggs in his appraisal of both Sean McDermott, but then also Ken Dorsey and Joe Brady, the offensive coordinators that he's had in in Buffalo that seems to what really has set him off over the last couple of years was just some of that classic stuff mastermind move by the Texans if Diggs is still unhappy we'll show him the door is it possible that they did this because tank oh and it guarantees a wide receiver so the try so Scott you're you're asking about the trade in general you know what that's a really good point um maybe it's one that it it had occurred to me and I hadn't really explored it uh Partly because I've seen Tank Dell running right now. And honestly, he looks pretty damn good, man. Like, I, I went over the video. I wish I knew how to find out metadata and everything. I don't think it was sped up. It looked like Tank Dell in his prime. So his agility coach put out some videos on Instagram a little while ago. And Tank Tank looks to be doing just fine. Nick said when he was on with us a few weeks ago that they expect Tank to be full go and and, and ready. So uh, it crossed my mind. I don't think that it's it's that big a deal. Yeah, mutual decision on both sides. You know what? As far as what Adam Schefter reported, it wasn't really clear to me whether this was agreed to ahead of time. Yeah, as as part of the blockbuster trade to acquire wide receiver Stefan Diggs, the Houston Texans wiped out the final three years of his contract. Um, so I think I think this may have been agreed to ahead of time. And this maybe this was one of the things they were talking about when Nick cleared all that cap space, and then we waited. You got me now? You got me now? Please. <laughs> All right. Am I back? Yes. All right. Thank you. I got a little bit of a delay here. Oh, I, I don't know. I, okay. I'll buy a new interface. I'll buy a new interface. Thank you for the advice. Um, from everybody. So I have no idea what I was, uh, what, what, I, I can't recall what I was talking about um, when I lost my crap, but thank you, everybody. So going live isn't easy. Great work. Thanks. Thank you. Um, now start over. You can go back and watch from the beginning, damn it. You know what I was doing too? It was something stupid while, while you couldn't hear me. Um, 
Oh yeah, if you want, if you want to see the video of Tank Dell, go back to the Seth Payne show. Uh, the the thumbnail that has the uh, the picture of Tank Dell on it. That's your best bet at finding the the video. I I reposted the video that his speed coach. I can't think of his name right now. It's on there. Had put out there. He looks fast as hell. He looks inhuman. Not inhuman in like the way that conditions sometimes are, uh, but inhuman in like a alien type of way. Diggs production decree. Okay, so there's a lot of, not necessarily a whole lot more details. Okay, with the contract adjustment, the Texans now anticipate getting the best version of Stefan Diggs. will be in position to negotiate another long-term contract next offseason. We, we, we talked about that. Um, the three-time captain with the Bills, Diggs signed a four-year, $104 million contract extension with the team. This is where it gets depressing in the modern NFL. Signed an, extend, signed an extension in April of 2022. The Bills will carry a dead money charge of $31 million next season. Um, we've talked about all of this. The cap in expanding by as much as it did kind of screwed up things in either a good way or a bad way, depending on how you see fit. But I think one thing that it did was teams are very willing to just cram all of this dead money on moves that they felt feel like they needed to make and they'll just rip the band-aid off and get a guy out the door for very minimal compensation. Um they're willing to do that. The Bills will carry a dead money charge of 31 million dollars. According to roster management system, that will be the highest known dead money charge ever for a wide receiver in any season, according to ESPN stats and information research. Uh, so I've, there's this article by Tim Graham in The Athletic that kind of details the timeline from 2022 in the playoffs when he flipped out on the sidelines and was yelling at yelling at coaches, yelling at Josh Allen. On into the 2023 offseason, he was absent from the mandatory minicamp or OTAs, whatever it was. McDermott wouldn't really talk about it, but said he was concerned. There's just been drama brewing for over a year now. And... It, what Tim Graham phrased it was a thousand microaggressions. You look at that and you look at the fact that he'd been there for two years without a hiccup. Everything was going smooth. Got a new contract. And and yet, over the course of that season after he got the contract, I, I don't know if he just started to maybe sense his football mortality. You know, people have talked about him in the past as a potential Hall of Famer. He's getting up there in years and you, you start to realize, okay, those dreams might be slipping away. So those are Buffalo's issues. And before Buffalo had issues, Minnesota had issues. I think this, again, like the title of the thumbnail, I said something about acknowledgement. This is just acknowledgement that, look, Stefan Diggs, like many other receivers in the past, might just have a short shelf life on a, a football team. And if you can keep the contract short and keep the carrot on a stick in front of him and keep him chasing that for one year. The dude can be the best guy on earth and he can be a model citizen. I think he's going to thrive in this offense. So I think this is really, this is a good move by Nick. I don't think it's like a, it's not like a barn burner best deal ever or anything, but it just, it, it makes sense. And I appreciate all of you who kept with me through at least like what seemed to be either 45 seconds or seven hours of inaudibility on this podcast. I'm Seth Payne. Uh played for the <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, model citizen. All right. I don't I don't know how your standards are, Ripsaw, but I'm going for I'm going for model citizen, damn it. So oh uh, yeah, I played for the Texans a long time ago. If you're new to this channel, uh, I, I do sports radio 610 on 610 a.m. in Houston in the mornings. You can stream you can follow the YouTube channel. It's the easiest way to watch us and listen to us these days. Um, and you can you can follow my YouTube or suggest it to a friend, you know? And tell your therapist about it. Thanks everybody for jumping on with me on short notice. Uh model citizen Seth Payne checking off, signing out, all that stuff. I'm glad you can hear me.